Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very grateful to God for this opportunity to be here and to have fellowship with you this morning. Particularly, I'm here to share in the joy of my beloved brother and our president, Apostle Dr. Aaron Amina, who celebrated his birthday on Friday. Uh, sometimes you need to find an opportunity to say thank you to some people and for your loved ones and all that. And so I think that today is a right day or one of the best days that I can come and say thank you to Apostle Dr. Aaron Amina um, for his support to our ministry and particularly the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. First of God bless you. Yeah. And then I'm also here because um, the world was created by God and it is managed by human beings and God. Uh, so sometimes human beings can orchestrate many things. And so I'm also here because I have to be here this morning uh, to be the speaker for this great occasion. I'll be speaking from Psalm 92. Psalm 92. I'll read from the first um, two verses. Psalm 92, first two verses. Um, my time, they have subtracted six already. Are they, okay. <laughs> Somebody is cheating me already. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, fine. So, Psalm 92. Uh, I normally would like to read from the NIV. So, let's take the NIV and then we'll move on if you have. Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Let me just take that again. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. See, the Jewish tradition uh, assigned one psalm a day in a week. So they have a particular psalm that they sing on Mondays, particular psalm for Tuesday, a particular one for Wednesday, and particular one Thursday, Friday. But this Psalm 92 was reserved for the Sabbath. This Psalm 92 was reserved for the Sabbath. This psalm talks about the praise, offering praise and thanksgiving to God. Just as verse 2 said, you see, there is no lack of subject matter. When it comes to praise, there is no lack of subject matter. His love and kindness and his unfaithfulness can take care of the whole night. Take care of the whole night. When you are thinking about God and you are looking at his faithfulness, it is sufficient also to to. Uh, maybe to take the whole day and then his loving kindness will take the night there is no subject of praise matter uh, when it comes to thanking God there is no lack of subject as you say but I want to take this scripture from the King James Version King James Version Psalm 92 it is a good thing the NIV says that it is good to praise the Lord. But this one is saying that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Now my emphasis will be on the thing, a good thing. Now if he says it is good to praise the Lord, it is not the same as saying it is a good thing to praise the Lord. It is a good thing simply means that uh, it is good to develop an attitude of gratitude towards the Lord. Yeah. It is a good thing. Means it is good to develop an attitude of gratitude towards the Almighty God. It should be a kind of habit. Habit. You should develop the habit of praising God and thanking Him. You know, Job 
the righteous man had that kind of habit. To the extent that he was even uh, sacrificing and taking offerings for his children because probably they might have sinned against God. He was that kind of a man that in the midst of severe trial, he could still offer thanksgiving and praise to God. And the Bible says that it is good for us to cultivate that attitude of gratitude towards the Almighty God. If it is good, then it is beneficial. It is good also for the one who gives thanks, as well as those who hear him. Psalm 34, shall we read time Psalm 34? Psalm 34. Um, so where do I start reading? From, I will restore the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. The next verse. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. So when you are praising God, it is beneficial to the one who is doing the praise as well as those who are here. So sometimes you bless the name of the Lord. You praise him and the afflicted hears and the afflicted rejoices. Are we together? Now if it is beneficial, then it is rewarding to give thanks to the Lord than to mama grumble and complain and we are used to that much more than blessing the name of the lord it is a good thing in the sense that the lord deserves deserves such praises god is always waiting for us to say thank you and god, he deserves it see praising god is not a challenge but trying to praise him all times is the is, is the challenge now psalm 34 again Psalm 34 again. I will restore the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And I'm saying that restoring the Lord, blessing the Lord, is not too much of a problem. All of us can bless God. But doing it at all times is a challenge. Doing it at all times is the challenge. His praise will continually be in my mouth or on my lips. Why am I saying this? Because you see, praise does not come to us that easily. So if you are in the choir, we come and sing. Because we say come and sing, what, what will you do? You have to sing. And when we say change the song to a praise item, you have to do it. We went to church uh, and then we had a very big conference. And when we asked the choir to come and sing, their first song was uh, Elijah. Uh, these, these are the days of Elijah. Bah, 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 bah. Ah, what have we done? <laughs> See, we have just come to church. Instead of praising God, say, this, uh, uh, what fire are you going to call? See, it is very important. You see, he was, the choir leader was coming without knowing that we are in the presence of God. At least, at least, if we can't do anything at all, the first few words that should come out of our mouth should be praise. That is why scripture says, just enter his gaze with thanksgiving in your heart and in your mouth with praise. So, I thought that that should be a, maybe a slip. Then the second one too was about worrying us. Ah, what is going on? My friend, change the song. Yeah, reverse it. Let's begin this service with a praise in our lips. Yeah. Praise does not come to us all the time. So for David to say that I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise will continually be in my mouth. Uh, is, that is where the challenge is. Because sometimes the news we hear does not generate praise in our hearts. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and the mood is not praiseworthy. And so, praising God at all times is a challenge. Um, if we have to reflect on our lives, maybe the year 2023, the, the, the past year, the feeling may vary depending on how you, you view the year or you measure it. Why am I saying this? Some got promoted. Some gave birth to children. 
others might have lost one even in this same church I, many years ago I attended a service here in Tema I was a district pastor somewhere and in that same assembly there was somebody who is coming to thank God for granting the fellow a baby and somehow I think the pastor uh, didn't manage the day well. There was somebody also who parents were coming to town God uh, because uh, when she she went uh, to deliver the baby, uh, this lady died. Uh, the baby is alive, but the woman is gone. As, as of, why do you put these two together? Yeah. You know, this is pastorally, is this wrong? At least you should know that these two, they can exist on the same platform. But it is happening. So when you reflect on life, you realize that um, as we are celebrating our great dad's birthday, in this same church, we might have lost someone last year or even this year. And so when you want to reflect, the feeling varies. No, a sibling might have passed on or a spouse might have gone to be with the Lord. A major health challenge might have struck someone in 2023 or 2024. Yet, some got married. Others were miraculously healed. Hmm? Are we together? Yes. One might have experienced reduced finances. Others who oh, bless God for financial breakthroughs. That is why when we come to church on the 31st night and you are praising God, be measured. Sometimes what you say. You see? And so when you have to reflect, you realize that it isn't all the time that praise can be in your mouth. So what then is praise? What then is praise? See, but no matter what happened or happens, the righteous requirement of us is to give thanks. No matter what happened or what happens, the righteous requirement that God is expecting of us is to give thanks. That is why in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 is saying that give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Full stop. In all circumstances, he's expecting you to give thanks. And when the circumstances are positive, like our dad's own, we need to bless the name of the Lord. We need to seize the opportunity and we say, God, thank you. So we want to bless the name of the Lord for the life of our president and our father, Apostle Dr. Aaron Amina. And I'm sure the wife is also celebrating somehow. I realize that when it is my birthday, it is my wife who really enjoys her birthday. <laughs> You see her going up and down, and sometimes I have even forgotten. It's ah, today is your birthday. I said, Oh, today is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Ashanti, my birthday, crime in <laughs> Today is my birthday. These days, it's people who actually remind me because of this, uh, the position. Uh, happy birthday. I said, Oh, tomorrow will be my birthday. <laughs> Otherwise, I've forgotten. Then should they go up and down trying to fix on me? You see the joy of the woman when it is the husband's birthday. Just this past few days, when we had a last week, when we had a Father's Day, uh, oh, I had forgotten. I was busy sitting by my Bible. My wife came, Happy Father's Day. So today is Father's Day. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. May the Lord, may the Lord for you taking care of my ch our children. See, my wife is blessing me. Look at, look at how happy she is. So I'm sure that Mama, she is more happier than even the man. <laughs> because women, as for birthday, we like it, but not so much as women will like it. And so happy birthday to you, our dear dad. It, so when the opportunity is good like that, seize it with your two hands and bless the Lord. And bless and bless the Lord.
now if it is not too praise does not come to us so easily then what then is praise i want to suggest to you that praise is a choice praise is a choice it is a sacrifice see hebrews 13 verse 15 says this through jesus christ therefore let us continually offer to god a sacrifice of praise now sacrifice is always not beneficial to the one who is doing it sacrifice simply means you are going to lose something sacrifice means you are doing a thing in a in a difficult situation and then say that let us offer a sacrifice of praise the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name so the bible says offer sacrifices of praise and then we used to sing this old song we bring sacrifices of praise into your house so praise is a sacrifice if you don't make conscious effort to praise you may never praise you only praise when you come to church and the choir forces you to praise now praising god therefore or thanking god is an attitude it's an attitude that needs to be developed now it is an understanding that the lord is god see to praise god or to give thanks is an understanding that the lord is what god he made us we are his now this understanding should stick deep into our spirit no matter what you should know that the lord is god he made us we are his we are the sheep of his pasture now praising god also means that the law is good and that is faithfulness endures forever uh, knowing that the lord is good is something that we must cultivate it doesn't matter the circumstances the fact that the lord is good is constant it should be set aside all other things vary but the fact that god is good he is good so and his faithfulness endures forever let me read some hundred to just lift your spirit some hundred some hundred shout for joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him with joyful songs verse three know that the lord is god that's why he didn't say think oh say no. Yeah. no the fact that god is god you must know that the lord is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture this one know it the next verse four enter his gaze with thanksgiving in thanksgiving and his cause with praise give thanks to him and praise his name the next verse for the lord is good on your back on your bad the lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all what generations this is a great sum now because praise is a sacrifice it is a sign of maturity <laughs> when a child is growing they are always complaining and crying every little thing every little thing when you grow you have to be mature you don't always go to your mother complaining that this one has hit me this one has that this one says i'm a fool <laughs> people who are grown they don't do that praise is a sign of maturity colossians 1 verse 10 and 11. this is a prayer the apostle paul prayed for the church in Colos, uh, in the colossians church and this is what he said so that you may live a life worthy of the lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good ways growing in the knowledge of god he's praying that they will grow in the knowledge of god and all that then say being strengthened with power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience it's like progressively he's praying for them now then then verse 12 and giving joyful thanks to the father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people 
in the kingdom of light overflowing with thanksgiving the king james will say so that once you are really mature you see that one of the signs is that your life will be overflowing with thanksgiving there was a day i was torn between making this young man a deacon or an elder because when the pastor submitted the list and he had made this man an elder i thought i knew him and that maybe we should wait a bit not to rush him into being an elder we can let him be a deacon because he was a brother and the pastor was trying to convince me that the guy is good he's an elder and all that so what i decided to do is to invite the young man and engage him in conversation he's going to talk and i'm going to weigh what he's saying whether he's a mature person or not then i started from the family so how is your family say my family was awful and that's some good one <laughs> and then when i ask the next question say as for witches and wizards in our family that's okay God bless you. I'll see you some other time. Somebody like this, you can't be an elder. No. He said, it's not mature. In the midst of all the challenges, because life is full of them. And so if you're always going to dwell on them, when will you find time to praise God? Yeah. So people who are not mature are always complaining and murmuring. In a church, wonderful church like this, they may still not see any good thing to thank God about. But they will always be majoring or minors that divides the people. And so let us mature. So I would like to suggest some postures you should take to help you develop an attitude of gratitude unto God. Would that be okay? Fine. The first one is that the grace of God should not be taken for granted. The grace of God should not be taken for granted. You see, we, we are all praying that we will age on. But somehow, some people don't attain 60. They don't. And many people in this land, they don't attain 60. They never attain 60. So many times we take the grace of God for granted. And do not make any effort to say thank you to him. Yeah. See, when Jesus had to travel, through Samaria. Um, it is only John that said he had to travel. Otherwise, when you are moving from Galilee to Jerusalem and you want to go through Samaria, you must take the askets. Because the Samaritans were not so free with the Jews. So trying to navigate through their land was also dangerous. So they'll go through the askets. That is where you meet lepers. Lepers were outcasts. And then somehow he met 10 of them who saw him from afar and they came closer to him by invitation. He healed them and said, go and show yourself to the priest. On their way, they realized that they were cleansed. One of them returned who was not a Samaritan. And then Jesus said this, verse 17 um, of Luke 17. Let's go to 17 of Luke 17. Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? So I would have thought that Jesus, in his modest uh, manner and appearance, when this man came and said, Thank you, you would have said, But Jesus was actually waiting for the thank you. He expected it. That is why he says that, Where are the others? Where, what about the nine? So God is always expecting us to say thank you. And the reason why we normally will not say thank you and the mistake of the nine, I don't think that they didn't acknowledge what he did for them. They realized that they were cleansed and they will be happy. But you see, they never reflected enough. They never reflected enough. I'm thinking that. Let us reflect and you see the goodness of God. In the midst of challenges, you see that God is good. That was their failure. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. What is the first word there? Reflect on what I am saying. Let's go to verse 8. Verse 8. What is the first word? Remember. So let's go to verse 7. 
when you reflect what will happen verse 8 you will remember when you don't reflect you will not remember that is why Psalm 124 says that if the Lord had not been on our side look at the condition so he plays the whole whatever is he is going through in a condition and he says that if the Lord had not been on our side let Israel say if the Lord had not been on our side sometimes um, you see uh, big men like this they jump out of their car they introduce them as president and people clap you get close to him let him tell you some of the ish situations he has gone through in the past and sometimes you can you can't even uh, relate to how people like that can be presidents of a whole institution like ours if the law had not been on our side let israel say look at the next verse now if still condition the lord had not been on our side when people attack us and in this life people attack us they attack us physically they attack us spiritually people attack us verse 3 they see they would still condition they would have swallowed us alive when their anger fled against us the first day that i saw and i knew that someone did not like me i was shocked <laughs> i thought everybody liked me <laughs> And this fellow said that if they gave her a gun to shoot me, she would not even, uh, she would not waste, I mean, seconds. But this fellow was also hanging around our home all the time. I wonder. Oh. Now, if the Lord has not been on our side, let Israel say. Now, verse 5. Or verse 4. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. A raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord. Who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bear from the foulest snare. Sometimes you may never know. Just as doctor is not aware that I'm coming here today. But I've come. You see. And so the, the scheme against us. But the Lord does not give us into their hands. He doesn't do that. So let me take the second one. You should count your blessings, not your curses. Try. You should always count your blessings, not your curses. See, none of us have it all. None of us. None of us have it all. Sometimes we wish that, oh, I were like this man. Just because of the bigness of his car. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> you don't know sometimes we concentrate so much on our lacks to the extent that we fail to recognize the goodness of the lord on our lives but brothers and sisters the lord is good you see the life we have the fact that you are alive itself to give you a cause to bless the lord uh, can I please ask you to stand if you can? Ask you to stand. Yeah. Standing is much more healthy, I've heard. Yes. Um, if any of you needed an aid to bring you to church, probably you would not have been here today. When I say stand, you are standing. But you have never blessed the Lord for your legs. Because you don't reflect. Yeah. There are some Christians who are much more spiritual. Much more godly. But they are, they are sitting at home. Their two legs are gone. They are in wheelchairs. Good Christians. Some have their legs hanging in Kolebu. Because of an issue. But say stand you are standing. You have to bless God for your leg. You have to bless God. I went to the hospital many years ago to visit this young man who, who had had an accident. And, and so when I got to where he was, I realized that someone was groaning behind me. 
And so I turned and I realized that this young man has had his hand chopped off like that. And he was bleeding. See, I was praying for this one who was a member of our church and not in any much serious condition. And then all of a sudden, I took my hands off the head and I swung it like this. Do you know why? It was just by reflex action. I was checking whether my was there. Yeah, because I saw that this one's limbs were gone. And I saw myself taking my hands off his head and swinging it. Some of us don't see that even having two hands is a blessing. Having two hands is a blessing. Shall we please sit down? My father came to me many years back when he was around 75 and he was complaining of pain in, in the knee and all that. And then he came to me in my office one day. He said, oh, my leg, my leg, my knees. So, oh man, I looked at him. I said, so what do you want us to do? Uh, he didn't say anything and he went. The following day he came again. Oh, you could take it, you could take it. <laughs> then I said, oh man, this is your leg. It has carried you out uh, for 75 years. What do you want this leg to do? You see? Yeah. So he was sick and he came with some malaria. We have cleared it. What do you want this leg to do? And then I intentionally decided to remind him of his friends who, who are dead. I said, ah, where's Mr. Correa? I said, oh, now Mr. Correa would have died down there. I said, okay. Now, where is this man, uh, Mr. Bonsu? I said, oh, say Bonsu, dear. Hey, say Bonsu, say Bonsu. And I said, okay. So when will we go to the hospital? So I made the end of call. <laughs> you see, that is how I cured my father. See, his mind is gone. See, see, if you don't reflect, you may never know what God is doing. All oh, these friends of yours, they are dead and gone. And for some of them, many years. And you, you are 75. And somehow your leg is aching. Bless God for the rest of the body. <laughs> that is strong. Bless God for the rest of the body. Number three. You need to live in a daytight compartment. Yeah, live in a daytight compartment. Close the door to yesterday. Shut the door to tomorrow. And live in the day. So the Bible says, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So God is expecting you to rejoice and be glad in the day. But many a times we carry baggages from the past to destroy the day. So remembering what somebody did and what somebody said. And sometimes we are even anxious of the unborn tomorrow. Live in a daytight compartment. Scripture says that every day comes with its own challenges. So tomorrow is coming with its own challenges. Don't open that door and add it to today's. And yesterday's challenge is don't open the door and add it to today's. You can't carry it. What you have is the day. Just live in the day. That is why the day is also described as present. Actually, the present. This is present. So enjoy the present, not the tomorrow that you have not entered into. And close the door to yesterday. And live in a daytight compartment. When you do that, your mouth can be filled with praise. Can be filled with praise. You can get that from Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 34. Number four. You need to have the firm assurance that your destiny is secure in God. Despite. See, um, I like David and Joseph for many reasons. One of it is that for these two people, they believe that everything is God. Yeah. One day Shimea was insulting David. He was calling him the king a fool. And Abisha was so angry. And Abisha said, leave me alone. Let me go and then kill this man. Let me go and finish him. Who are you to say such a thing to the king? And the king David said, stop, don't worry. Maybe the Lord has given him that opportunity to say this to me. Maybe God will look on my plight and have mercy upon me. 
One day, Joseph told his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God was going to use it for something good. For them, everything is God. And so, they don't have any, any, any cause to be complaining and fighting. Please, know that your destiny is secure in the hands of God. Don't say that this one did this, that is why that, no. Don't bring those compet uh, uh, computations. It will disturb your spirit. Nobody can snatch you from the hands of God. See, what God has prepared for you, what God has really prepared for you, if he has prepared for you, it will come to pass. The only person that can destroy it is you yourself. Not that man. Not at all. Sometimes the Bible says that they orchestrated, but the Lord sits up there and he laughs. Why did he, why does he laugh? He laughs because nothing can change his plans. Yeah. And when you have that kind of attitude, you'll be able to bless God. Let me take the last one. See, what else? Shall we read together? Those of you can ready to go. What else can a bound slave or servant say to the master? Is it not to thank you? You, if you have anything else, tell me. You are a slave. What else will you say to your master? Is it not thank you? See, um, when people have made servants and all that, sometimes they will cook rice and then when the rice is fetched for their children and all that, and it is finished. And they give you that one. When you take it, will you throw it on your master? What else can you say? Thank you. Thank you. I learned something when we were in South Africa. Anytime that you greeted them, how are you? They'll say, I can't complain. <laughs> I can't complain. I liked it. <laughs> because if you want to complain, you can start from here. And you can end in the United Kingdom. You, you, you have so many things to complain about. But when you ask the average South African, how are you? You say, I can't complain. I can't complain. Romans 9, verse 20. But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you to talk to, to talk back to your to your maker? Shall what is formed like us say to the one who formed us, Why did you make me like this? That is why at the latter part of Job's story. God came in and said, why? Why are you arguing with me? Why are you arguing with me? Shall what is found, turn and tell the master, why did you do this? Some people are really tall. When you are preaching and you make an illustration, you say, this person is too tall. Then they'll go down like that. When, it's, when you make an illustration, you use Zacchaeus, then they, are, they go up like that. They, sometimes the people cannot even accept their own physique. Yeah. And I'm, this thing is serious. Some people cannot just take how God made them. They wish that they would have had somebody's leg to replace theirs. And some of these things, I've, because I've heard a lot, that is why sometimes you may think that these things are not real, but it is. When we were growing up, a friend of mine decided to convince me to have an all night with him. In fact, we went for about three times praying. He was going, he, he, he was looking for a wife to marry. And one of his criteria was to have, was to have a woman with calf, you know, calf, Nenchu. <laughs> so three days we we're praying for a woman with calf. <laughs> you see how, how stupid we were? <laughs> we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Every day, Eric, please go and help me. And we'll go and pray. 
And then when it was about time for him to marry, uh, somehow I'd gone to the ministry, so I was not part of the wedding. So when I came back to Kumasi, it was around, I decided to go to his house. What do you think I was going to look at? <laughs> and, and somehow, <laughs> and somehow the woman he had eh, a calf behind him. <laughs> And we all, we said all these days praying and not sleeping. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my lips. Let us rise and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Count your blessings, not your curses. You may not have money, but you have children. Some also have money, but they don't have children. What do you do? Let us bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice everywhere. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Let's bless Him. For the Lord is good. 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 For the Lord is good.